Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin Ve salatu ve selam ala seyyidin ve selin nebiyyine Muhammed ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain ve yazık Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant his tawfiq and to grant his success and that he makes us from the people of iman and taqwa in the dunya and in the akhirah This is the tenth lesson from the excellent book written by Muhammed ibn Salih ibn Thaymin Rahimuhullah entitled Fawaid At-Taqwa min al-Qur'an al-Kirim The benefits of At-Taqwa from the Noble Qur'an And in today's session inshallah we are going to be looking at The ayat from Surah Al-An'am that the author has picked out for us In which he is highlighting some of the benefits uh, That a person of Taqwa can attain for himself If he has the characteristics of the people of Taqwa so he says now point number 33 from the book ان الاخرة خير من الدنيا للمتقين ان الاخرة خير من الدنيا للمتقين the akhirah is better than the dunya for who for the people of taqwa alone Allah says in ayah number 32 from surah an'am which is the 6th chapter from the Quran qala ta'ala وَلَدَّارُ الْآخِرَةُ خَيْنٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ And the hereafter, the land of the hereafter is better than, uh, oh sorry, the, the land of the hereafter is better for the people of Taqwa. But if we look at the ayah as a whole, we will see the benefits of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in this noble ayah. So in ayah number 32 from Surah Al-An'am, the sixth chapter of the Quran, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَعِبٌ وَلَهُ The life of this dunya is only play and idleness. وَلَدَّارُ الْآخِرَةِ خَيْرٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ However, the hereafter, the land of the hereafter is far better for the people of taqwa. أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Will you not then have any sense Imam al-Sa'di in his tafsir of this ayah says something which is absolutely amazing. هَذِهِ حَقِيقَةُ الدُّنْيَا وَحَقِيقَةُ الْآخِرَةِ This is the true reality of the dunya and the true reality of the akhirah. أَمَّا حَقِيقَةُ الدُّنْيَا As for the reality of the dunya, فَإِنَّهَا لَعِبٌ وَلَهُ Then it is only filled with play and time wasting. لَعِبٌ what is play and what is time wasting? He goes to explain. Laibun fil abdan. That a person uses his body in a way that is not befitting. He uses his body in a way that is immature. Using his body in a way that is full of ignorance. This is not the way of the people of taqwa. Laibun fil abdan. So whatever they do from the, using their bodies, which is not going to benefit them in the akhirah, all of that is laib. Walahun fil qulub. And idleness, playing, time-wasting, is what you have in your hearts. فَالْقُلُوبُ لَهَا وَالِهَا So the hearts, the hearts have this kind of vacancy about them. وَالنُّفُوسُ لَهَا عَاشِقَةً And the soul, what you desire inside yourself, it has a yearning and a desire and a, and a lust. وَالْهُمُومُ فِيهَا متعلقه. And a person's desires and a person's uh, aspirations are connected to all of this. It's connected to his heart being vacant. It's connected to his his soul being full of lusts, and then that becomes his objective. Well, ishtigal biha kalaib al sibyan. Well, ishtigal biha kalaib al sibyan. And when a person becomes of those people who is just full of laib and lahu and that's what the dunya will do to you as he is saying here rahimahullah shaykh abdul rahman bin nasir al-sa'di amma al-haqiqat dunya fa inna hiya laib wa lahu this is the reality of the dunya that is just full of laib and is full of lahu playing and idleness playing in your body using your body in a manner that's not befitting and lahu using your your inner uh, your inner aspirations, your inner thoughts, your inner desires, your inner self in a manner that doesn't fill his time with anything which is of khair. So his heart becomes vacant. 
his soul becomes uh, uh, bursting and enriched with just lusts it's on fire and all of his desires and objectives are connected to this light he then is overcome with a level of immaturity the life of the dunya will make you like a child plays with his toy does he benefit from it? no he doesn't really does he learn from it? no not really does he use it to, to, to attain a place in the akhirah? definitely not this is the level of immaturity that the haqiqah, the reality of the dunya will reduce you to. وَأَمَّا الْآخِرَةِ Imam Sa'adi says, However, for the akhirah, فَإِنَّ هَا خَيْرٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ As Allah says, that it is better for the people of taqwa. This is the aspirations. This is the objective. This is what their inner selves are saying. This is what their bodies want from them. فَإِنَّهَا خَيْرٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ This is the objective. They're not going to settle for anything less. Who are those people who want it? The people of taqwa. فِي ذَاتِهَا وَصِفَاتِهَا The akhirah is better in and of itself than the dunya. But even the characteristics, even the things that you can attain in the akhirah is better. وَبَقَائِهَا وَدَوَامِهَا It's everlasting, it's duration, it's, its length, its measurements is better. So not only is it better in itself, it's better in the things that you can do there. It's better in the duration. And in this Jannah that the people of Taqwa want, they will have everything that they desire. Every single thing that they desire. And it will be a pleasing to their eyes. And it will fulfill a bliss in their hearts and it will fulfill a bliss in their souls. وَكَثْرِتِ السُّرُورِ وَالْأَفْرَاحِ And it is a land which is full of joy and happiness. وَلَكِنَّهَا لَيْسَتْ لِكُلِّ أَحْدٍ Imam Sa'di says, رَحِيمَهُ الله. However, this akhirah is not just for anybody that they can walk into it. وَإِنَّمَا هِيَ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ It is only reserved for the people of taqwa الَّذِينَ يَفْعَلُونَ أَوَامِرَ اللَّهِ So what is taqwa? They fulfill the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَيَتْرَكُونَ النَّوَاهِ وَزَوَاجِرِ And they stay away from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with. And this is the end of what Imam Sa'di says about ayah number 32 from Surah Al-An'am وَلَدَّارُ الْآخِرَةِ what is taqwa? And we've just seen the definition given by Imam Sa'di as to what taqwa is. But Imam Baghawi, he says, يتقون, يتقون Imam Baghawi in his tafsir, Rahimahullah, says that the people of the Akhirah, the people who will have joy in the Akhirah, they are the people of taqwa. What are they going to have taqwa from? Shirk. This is why we have said over and over again, my brothers, my sisters, my dear listener, aqidah and iman and tawheed is not being penetrated in our lives enough. We are spending too much time in trying to benefit from things which are perhaps not going to increase us in our taqwa. And for some people, it is a trick from shaitan where he listens to lectures and the lecturer is talking about things which are not connected to him increasing in his aqeelah. And even some lectures will have people being entertained. It's about how funny the speaker is or how pleasant the speaker is or how pleasant the sheet is in the background. And for some people, the concentration span is one minute, two minutes, three minutes and that's it. There is a lack of taqwa in our lives, that Imam Baghawi is saying here, you will not gain Jannah in that way. You will not gain Jannah using your Instagram accounts alone. You will not gain Jannah by going onto YouTube. You will not gain Jannah by not engaging with what this religion is telling you to have, which is to have a taqwa. To increase in your iman, to increase in your aqeelah, to increase in having whatever it takes so that your aqeelah becomes strong. And that obviously includes learning, that obviously includes dua, obviously includes reciting of the Qur'an and pondering on it and, and, and speaking to Allah and standing in front of Him at length. 
But there are other things that a person can do to attain taqwa and stay away from shirk. And for some people, it might be uh, something which will work for himself, but it might not work for another person. So we see, for example, doctors becoming Muslim or doctors increasing in their iman when they are shown something from the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their own profession. What does that do? That increases them in taqwa, it increases them in aqeerah, increases them in iman. So there are other things that a person can do. I'm not trying to say that a person should be reciting Quran 24-7 so that he can then attain taqwa. That is not how it works. What we need to do is re-evaluate our priorities. We need to re-evaluate the way we spend our time so that we can then become from the people of taqwa, the people of aqidah, the people of iman. And as Imam al is saying here in this ayah, خَيْرٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ جَنَّةٌ has been made for the people of taqwa, meaning the people who save themselves from a shirk. Imam al-Tabari in the tafsir of this ayah, rahimahullah, he said in this ayah, Allah the Most High rejects the belief that there is no resurrection. Allah refutes the idea of the belief of some people that there is no resurrection. They have got closer as a result of this belief. They have got closer to the land of this dunya. Why? Where does it stem from? A lack of aqeedah, a lack of iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in His names and His attributes, and the resurrection. And as a result of a lack of taqwa and a lack of iman and a lack of belief in yawm al-akhir what that does for them is that they then cling on to the life of this dunya what does the life of this dunya entail as we have seen in the ayah, ayah number 32 from surah al-an'am Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes how it becomes as an addiction for them wa mal hayat dunya illa la'ibun wa lahu so Imam al-Tabari rahimahullah says that they get closer to the life of this dunya But this only involves playing and joking. So when your actions are full of play and your actions are full of joking, what does that do to your iman? Obviously it reduces. What does that do to your belief in the resurrection? It becomes non-existent, as Imam al-Tabari is saying here. He goes on to say, Rahimullah, Imam al-Tabari, Ibn Jarir, Rahimullah, meaning enjoyment and laughing is limited. The land of the hereafter is better for the people of taqwa. Meaning, the laughing and the enjoying, the laughing and the enjoyment that they have in this dunya is all limited. Pleasures and laughing will run away. Your body can only be entertained so much. Your body is a vessel; it can only be filled so much. Your sense of humor and your desires and, and your lusts and your, and your fantasies can only be quenched so much. Soon they will reduce. Soon you will not have any enjoyment in them anymore. Soon they will escape you. And Imam al-Tabari rahimahullah goes on to say, after you have become full with the life of dunya, this will be followed by a period of sadness and regret. And how true is that? How many people have been looking for goodness and happiness and to be respected and to have enrichment and to have contentment and to have comfort and to have tranquility and they're looking everywhere except for Allah. They're looking for it everywhere for, except for looking with it with Allah. So Imam al-Tabari rahimahullah goes on to say, so this ayah is saying, O oh mankind, do not be deceived. Who's the one who's saying it? The one who created the dunya is saying, don't be deceived by the dunya. The one who created mankind is saying, oh mankind, I am the one who's created the dunya, so do not be deceived by the dunya. This life is about obedience and working to move to a land where there is only joy. There is only happiness. But it is only experienced by the people of Taqwa. It will only be attained by the people of Taqwa. The people who tasted the real joy in the dunya. Who are the people who tasted the real joy in the dunya? The people of Taqwa. As Ibn Taymiyyah and others from the Salaf have said, how desperate and sad is the situation of a person who's walked into the dunya and he doesn't taste the sweetest thing in the dunya and then he leaves it. How sad is that situation? How regretful will be that person's stance on Yawm Qiyamah? What is the sweetest thing in this dunya? 
It's a Tawheed. There is no doubt about that. It is a Tawheed. So a person would be connected to performing a sin in a particular state, in a particular location, on a particular summer's day, let's say. It's a summer's day and he wants to go out and he wants to do particular sins and, he, and he's got memories and he's got a fond experience of using that time that Allah has created to do that haram thing. And he thinks that this is the, the, the joy of the dunya. He thinks that this is the reality of the dunya. However, the person of taqwa uses that time to get closer to Allah. He uses that time to reflect upon Allah and he creates for himself memories and he creates for himself experiences in getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather than using the day and the night and the summer and the winter and his holiday perhaps to create an experience and, and memories of sin. Because what happens when that person creates a life of memories and experiences of sin is that there will be a crash and there will be a fall. However, if a person looks at a waterfall or he looks at something that is going to increase him in his iman and he thinks of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he thinks about the akhirah and he ponders on the beauty and the joy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for him far better in the akhirah if he ponders on what he needs to do for himself to attain that station for himself using that time that he would have perhaps used to do something haram this is the joy of the people of the dunya. This is the true joy of the people of the dunya because they have benefited from the dunya. Whereas others haven't. So Imam Tabari is saying here, the people who tasted the real joy in the dunya are the people of taqwa. Therefore, he goes on to say, purity in the dunya will be purity in the akhirah. Purity in the dunya will be purity in the akhirah and it is only for the people of taqwa but the ayah completes itself by saying afala ta'kilun and imam al-sa'di rahimahullah says about afala ta'kilun meaning are you not going to then have any kind of intellect imam al-sa'di says in the tafsir of this a afala yakunu lakum uqul Will the life of this dunya not create intellect in yourself? Will it not create a, 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 a level of, of, of wisdom in yourself? That wisdom and that intellect and that knowledge should then create an awareness for you that there are two lands and there is one land which is far more superior and far more worthy for you to seek yourself to live in. Isn't it clear? Do you not see? Afala taqilun? Isn't it clear? Do you not see which land has more of a right for you to live in? Which land has more of a beauty stored for you in? Therefore, point number three that the author is saying here: Anna al-akhira khairu min al-dunya. للمتقين, that the akhirah is better for the people of taqwa than anything experienced in the dunya even if a person was the most happiest and the most fulfilled and the most satisfied person in the life of this dunya point number 34 أن المتسفين بها ناجون من إث Al-Khadi'een fi ayatillah. The people who have a taqwa they are safe from the sin of those people who speak with falsehood and are not truthful and they lie against the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in ayah number 68 and 69 from Surah Al-An'am. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ الَّذِينَ يَخُودُونَ فِي آيَاتِنَا فَأَعْرِدْ أَنْهُمْ حَتَّى يَخُودُوا فِي حَدِيثٍ غَيْرِهِ If you find yourself amongst a group of people and they are speaking of falsehood and they are speaking and they are creating lies against our ayat. Now we remember, if you remember back, ayat and the ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could be ayah qawni and ayah shari. Ayah of the universal decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it could also be the ayah 
of Allah which is legislative. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here, leave those people, or if you hear people speaking about falsehood, about the ayat of Allah, it could be the ayat of Allah which are koni, which are the universal ayat of Allah. Meaning, man was created from nothing. Meaning, man has certain orientations and, and things that he needs to do for himself, which perhaps, which are arguably not natural. Man was created from nothing, etc. So if you find yourself amongst the group of people who are talking about the ayat of Allah, whether it's the universal ayat of Allah or whether they are defaming the religion of Allah, فَأَعْلِدْ anhum. Stay away from such people. Do not be like such people. Do not imitate such people. Do not entertain such people. حَتَّى يَخُودُ فِي حَدِيثٍ غَيْرِ Until, and this is very important, until they change the topic of their discussion. Now this is very important because Islam is not telling us here now that you need to be violent towards those people who you disagree with. Clearly, because Allah is saying here, until they change the topic of their discussion. وَإِمَّا يُنْسِيَنَّكَ الشَّيْطَانِ But if shaitan makes you forget. If shaitan makes you slip up. فَلَا تَقْعُدُ بَعْدَ الذِّكْرَى فَلَا تَقْعُدُ بَعْدَ الذِّكْرَى مَعَكُمِ الظَّانِمِينَ Until you become aware, until it becomes to your attention, do not sit with these people. If you have a slight uh, lapse of what is going on, if you are temporarily unaware, temporarily forgot, then do not... Blame yourself, perhaps that was from shaitan. But when you come to know that these people are speaking about certain things which are not correct, they are talking about falsehood, they are talking about uh, witnessing against Allah which is not correct, which is not based on any proof. Do not sit with them until you become aware with the people of oppression. وَمَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ This is the point here. وَمَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ مِنْ حِسَابِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ For the people of taqwa, they will not be held to account for what those people have created as a false theory, as a false belief, creed, dogma, as false ideas against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because the people of taqwa are safe. The people of taqwa are safe from shirk. The people of Taqwa are safe from doing anything which is not going to please their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, these ayat and this point that the author is mentioning here, Rahimahullah, Anna al-Muttasifina biha najun min ithmin al-Khadiyin fi ayatillah. The people of Taqwa are safe from the sin of those people who dwell into the ayat of Allah without any right, meaning that the people of Taqwa are careful in what they do and what they say, and who they do and say with, who they associate themselves with. Why? Because they are the people of dhikra. فَلَا تَقُدْ بَعْدَ الذِّكْرَى The people of dhikra, the people of taqwa. When you become a person who is reminded, when you become a person who is aware and alert of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded from you, and has forbidden uh, for you to fall into, then you become from the people of taqwa. You are the person who is reminded. And this is a very important point, which is that the people of taqwa benefit from the commandments of Allah. They benefit from the ayat of Allah. They benefit from the, 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 the creation of Allah and they benefit from the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, they are the people who are being constantly reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not to say, again, this is not to say that a person needs to be in a constant state of Allah, 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 subhanAllah, 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 Allah, Allah, Akbar, Allah, Akbar. That is not ideal. Nobody is going to attain that. And that's not the sunnah that the Prophet ﷺ left behind. However, taqwa is broader than that. Taqwa is for you to be an upright person in every single situation that you find yourself in. So you can be a person of taqwa just by sitting, as this ayah says. You could be sitting, socializing with people. You're from the people of taqwa. You could be mixing with your family, but then you are still from the people of taqwa. Why? Because you are not engaging in things which are falsehood. You are cooperating in things which are good. You are trying to bring joy into people's life, maybe making them laugh. You are trying to benefit people about those things that uh, could uh, change in their dunya, so you give them advice. That is taqwa. But when they start talking about things which are batil, which are false, which are sinful, they become the people of dhikra. فَلَا تَقُدْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرَ مَعَنْكُمِ الظَّالِمِينَ Do not sit with the people who are dwelling into this falsehoodness, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this falsehood, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing them as, as being uh, oppressing themselves to some degree, 
the people of dhikra, the people of taqwa, the people of remind, the people who are reminded by the reminders of Allah are the people of taqwa. Therefore, the people of taqwa are the people who are reminded, and the people of taqwa are the people who remind. With being reminded, they are now at a balance of knowing what is good and they know what is bad. Now these ayat in Surah Al-An'am were revealed in Mecca. And some of the companions came to the Messenger of Allah wasallam, And they came to the Prophet wasallam. And this has been narrated by Ibn Abbas anhuma in the tafsir of uh, Surah Al-An'am 68-69. That Muslims used to sit in Mecca. And they used to sit with the people of shirk sometimes. And they used to pass by the people of shirk sometimes. And they used to hear that the people of shirk, the mushriks, used to be in the masjid, masjid al-haram, whilst saying things against Islam or saying things which entailed shirk. So they used to praise their idols and they used to praise their false deities and they used to have, uh, you know, uh, talk about aqidah which is not correct. They used to believe in lots of things when it comes to aqidah which was not correct, such as not believing in the resurrection, uh, such as, you know, different innovations, etc., or sometimes they used to attack Islam. So now that the Prophet ﷺ was there, the companions, as Ibn Abbas anhuma narrated, the companions came to the Messenger of Allah ﷺ and they said, listen, we want to enter into Masjid al-Haram, but these people are sitting there. How can we enter when they are saying things of shirk and they are being blasphemous when it comes to our religion? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then revealed this ayah to remove any kind of blame for the people of taqwa. So this ayah is saying, whilst you are entering to the masjid to pray, whilst you are entering to the masjid to make tawaf, if you are from the people of dhikra, فَلَا تَقْوَدْ بَعْدَ الذِّكْرَ مَعَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ وَمَعَ الَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ مِنْ حِسَابِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ You are the people of taqwa when you enter into the masjid and you have this level of disassociation with what they are saying. That makes you from the people of taqwa, that makes you from the people of dhikra, meaning they are reminded themselves and they remind others of tawheed. Others from the ulama have said that this was revealed about the Prophet who used to sit with the mushrikun in order to call them to Islam. But when he used to call them to Islam, they used to mock him. Or they used to say statements of kufr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now commands the Prophet in these ayat that if you are giving da'wah, then you need to have taqwa. If you are mixing with your family members, you need to have taqwa. If you find yourself in, uh, in any given situation where you have to socialize, whether it's on your phone, whether it's physical socialization, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the Prophet to leave when there is no benefit, to leave when there is sin involved. This makes you from the people of taqwa. Therefore, this point that we learn is that the people of taqwa are safe in their social gatherings. They are safe in their characteristics. They are safe in the way that they behave, the way they treat them one another, and the way that they tolerate other people's tongues and the things that they say. And they do that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if they see something good, they love it. If they see something bad or they hear something bad, they cannot handle it. The people of taqwa cannot handle hearing anything which is wrong, hearing anything which is going to displease their Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. الْمُتَّسِفِينَ بِهَا نَاجُونَ The people of taqwa are safe مِنْ إِثْمِ الْخَادِئِينَ فِي آيَاتِ اللَّهِ Are safe from those people who... Dwell into falsehood when it comes to the ayat of Allah. And this includes attacking the ayat of Allah, speaking wrongly about the ayat of Allah, or even then just rejecting the ayat of Allah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us to do something uh, or stay away from something, uh, there could be a gathering where people are not being cautious about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded. However, the people of taqwa are safe in the way they behave, in the way they socialize, in the way they speak. The last point for today is the 35th point that has been mentioned by the author, Annaha, meaning taqwa. Annaha, min asbab al-rahma. Taqwa is a means for a person to attain rahma from Allah. 
What's the proof of this? Qala ta'ala, Allah says in Surah Al-Anam, the sixth chapter of the Qur'an, ayah number 155, فَاتَّبِعُوهُ Follow the Qur'an. وَاتَّقُوا have taqwa لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ In order for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon you. And again, if we read the ayah in full, perhaps we will then attain a benefit that we perhaps would not attain just by looking at what the author has mentioned. The ayah 155 in Surah Al-An'am says, وَهَذَا كِتَابٌ this is a book. Anzalnahu Mubarak. We have revealed it and it is blessed. Fattabi'u. Therefore, follow it. What taqu have taqwa la'allakum turhamun. In order for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show mercy upon you. This ayah actually tells us something which is very important, which is why has Allah given us a book? Why, Allah, why has Allah revealed the Quran to us? Allah has given us a Qur'an, and the Qur'an is blessed. Therefore, if the Qur'an is blessed, وَهَذَا كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ مُبَارَكٌ Allah has revealed the book, and it is Mubarak. Why has Allah revealed it? The fa at taqib gives us the answer. So now when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاتَّبِعُوا The fa, fa fatha fa fat, is telling us, this is known as fa at taqib with the ulama. Fad Ta'aqib is basically telling us the reason as to why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed the Qur'an in order for us to follow it, in order for us to attain taqwa, in order for us to attain the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the Qur'an is blessed and it increases a person in uprightness, so he follows it, he attains ilm from it, then he follows it, then he attains ilm from it, then he follows it, then he attains ilm from it, then he follows it. What happens to him? He is now becoming of those people who has mutaba'a, fattabi'u. But then when he has ilm and then he follows it, when he has ilm and then he follows it, when he becomes a follower, what does he become? He becomes a person of taqwa. What taqwa? Therefore the Qur'an is blessed and it makes blessed people. The Qur'an is blessed and it increases a person in goodness and in reward. Because Allah says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Meaning, Allah will show mercy upon you. Meaning, Allah will show you goodness and Allah will reward you for that goodness. Therefore, why has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given us the Qur'an? Allah has given us the Qur'an because it is blessed. It is uncreated. It is from His names and His attributes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to follow it. So that we can attain taqwa for ourselves. And so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah, So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us of those people who abide by its laws and follow its practices and then as a result of all of that attain the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Imam Sa'di rahimahullah says in the tafsir of this ayah فَأَكْبَرُ فَأَكْبَرُ السَّبَبْ لِنَيْلْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ اتِّبَاء هَذُ الْكِتَابِ عِلْمًا وَعَمَلًا The greatest way that a person can attain the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to follow this book in knowledge and in practice the greatest way that a person can attain the rahmah of Allah, the mercy of Allah, the acceptance of Allah, the reward of Allah, the multiplication of Allah, the expiation of Allah, all that is included in the rahmah of Allah, is by attaining knowledge of this book and following this book. Therefore, why has Allah given us the Qur'an? Allah has given us the Qur'an, which is blessed, He has revealed it for us to follow it. To learn about it, follow it. Learn about it, follow it. Learn about it, follow it. The more you do that, you become a person of taqwa. The more you do that, the more Allah loves you and He will have mercy upon you and He will expiate for your sins, He will cover up your mistakes, He will multiply for you your rewards until you enter into Allah's Jannah. These are the three ayat that we have taken today from Surah Al-An'am, inshallah, next week. And perhaps, bi-idhnillah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to facilitate for us our affairs that next week's lesson, inshallah, could perhaps even take place in the masjid. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of the people of the masjid. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of the people of taqwa. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he shows mercy upon us, that he rectifies our wrongs, he rectifies our social 
situations that we have with one another, the way we treat one another, the way we behave with one another, the way we speak with one another, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of the people of ittiba' and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has mercy upon us in the dunya and akhirah. Hadha wallahu a'lam. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.